Well, hey there, folks. Welcome back once again to the Hop House. It's Eddie here, and it's time for our final review in this batch of quintessential British ales. Uh, if you're new to this channel, if you just found us here on YouTube and you're into your beers um, and you just wanted to go check us out, come on, give us that thumbs up, give us a like, share, and subscribe to this channel. It's the Hop House. We like hoppy beer, we like good house music. Uh, we're on the beer side. Um, we're nearly a year old. I'm going to be putting up a video in the next few days in regards to um, our first birthday. We're also on, on the Book of Face. Yeah, we've got a Facebook page. By the way, I don't do Twitter or Instagram. Maybe that would help my profile grow, but I just I don't like those those platforms personally. So I'm just not going to be on them. I'm not on them on my own name, and I'm certainly not going to be on them in the channels. So um, we are on Facebook. So go check out the Hop House. I think it's at Hop House Beer Reviews on Facebook. Uh, and that may be how I'm going to have to go live for the time being until we get the subscribers up. So come on, share the love, people. Right then, are you ready for our last quintessential British ale? Because I am. Okay, so we are looking at beers um, that, yeah, are sort of old school in style. Your bottled real ales, really. So we're looking at, again, stuff you can get in supermarkets. Uh, or if you go to a pub stuff, you may be able to find on cask um, that if you had like a friend or someone that's maybe traveling from abroad, not been to the UK for a while, or maybe never been to the UK before, and they think, well, we want to try your beer. What do you recommend? These are the sort of beers I would say, you know what? Why not try these? They may not be your cup of tea, um, but in terms of giving someone a quintessential British experience English experience um, then that's what I'd go for right so beer number four so this is gonna be our last one of this batch um, and this is a brewery that's been around for quite a number of years uh, it is in London mate so we're going back down south and it's brewed by the side of the Thames yeah sorry for the accent mate um, I don't know I can't remember the name of the area of London where, the, where it is it's recently, in the past few years, been taken over by Asahi, which is a Japanese lager brand. They do have a range of pubs all throughout the um, great uh, London area. Uh, and they have some outside. One of them is in Birmingham. It's fantastic. It's called the Old Joint Stock. It's got a theatre above it, and it is a beautiful, beautiful building. Of course, I'm talking about Fuller's Brewery. Uh, and this is their flagship beer, you probably already know what's coming. This label has had a re slight tweak recently, but it's still got its traditional side to it. It is this, Fuller's London Pride. London Pride, outstanding amber ale. Says it right there. And it is 4.7%, which it says on the back. Comes not going to pick it up. 4.7%, 500ml bottle. And there is the Crown London Pride. Uh, this is nothing to do with LGBT rights, by the way. It just means it's the Pride of London. It'd be ace if they did do a collaboration with Gay Pride in London. That'd be cool. Uh, I think that'd be wicked. Really good at opening boundaries and stuff. Um, sort it out for us in Asahi. Uh, yeah. So that is your uh, beer in a bottle. Should we get it out into the glass? I have had this many times um, on cask. Pretty sure it's the same strength on cask. Should have done a bit more research before going with this video, but it's 4.7%, pretty sure it's the same in Castle. Although I just so happened to have a London bottle opener from when I went there, there after my mini move. Uh, hey, hey. Right, beer in the glass. Uh, this is their yeah, flagship beer. It is very much a best bittery traditional sort of style beer. Probably a bit stronger than a best bitter at 47 Should be in the glass. Dropped a bit on the floor. It's only a drop. It's all right. Right. Yeah. So again, it's a little bit lighter than the last one we did. Again, it's gold. No. Yeah. It's more dark golden slash amber. Yeah. I'd say that was an amber color. A little bit of white head on it. It's probably not sticking around much longer, but it is quite heavily carbonated. It's clear. It's see through. It's been um, had finings through it and been filtered and all that good stuff because this is a traditional real ale it's not a craft beer that's going to have sediment or anything in it um 
This is available in your supermarkets, part of your four for six pound in your Tesco and in your Morrisons. I picked this up in Morrisons. Um, I think there may be, they, they sell it in Sainsbury's, but just individually priced. They may sell it in Asda as well, as part of their four for the price of three. But my Asda's just not that good. Well, the bottle ale section's all right, but they don't have this in here. So this was from Morrisons, right? The head's disappearing very quickly, but that might be because I just rinsed this glass out. So it may well be down to me, not the beer. Right, we're going to go for the aroma. So if you're new to these videos, I stick the schnozzle in there and we give it a whiff, see what we can sniff. Yeah, sort of following on from the previous beers I've done really. It's that traditional bready malt and a little bit of tart marmalade sort of hoppy smell and then the spiciness so it smells like you've got a dry loaf of bread so it's not toasted it's just a dry loaf of bread and then someone spread a little bit of marmalade on it and then crack some cracked pepper on the top that's sort of what you get in there that does sound really random i know it does now this is probably if um in terms of all the these quintessential British ales that we've done, if you do have a, a member of family or a friend or someone that's coming from abroad, they're probably most likely to see this. Especially if they're flying into London. If they're flying into, well, when I say flying into, you're not gonna get it on arrivals here, but when they're departing, if they're going back home, um, if there's a pub at Heathrow Airport or Gatwick, or whether it be a, a bar, I don't know if certain airports have weather spoons, um, but anyway, you're probably likely to see this on cask, on draft. I remember having it in either Heathrow or Gatwick. It's an iconic beer. It really is an iconic beer in terms of, you know, Dan Seth. I mean, like I say, I live in, in the West Midlands and they Fullers have the old joint stock in Birmingham, which is a beautiful, beautiful building. And they have the, the London Pride there. And it's... um. I really like it. It's sort of a, a pint that I'll, a, a beer, sorry, that I always have a pint of because it's a bit like when we did the Routon Brewery um, pheasant. Go check out the, the video of us being out and about. I said the Ironbridge Gold, I got a barrel of it from a wedding, you know, but it, every time I go into their pub, I always have a pint of Ironbridge Gold. It's almost like it's impolite not to. And I think that's what Fuller's is. If I go into a Fuller's pub, I might have a look and see what the guest ales are, but I'll always have a pint of London Pride because it's just, I just know it's solid. Right, should we bottoms up and down the hatch? It's nice. It's really nice. Even in a bottle, it's, um, it's got that, malty feel to it but then down the sides of the tongue you've got that marmalade sort of dried fruity sort of feel to it um, and there's some pepperiness and spiciness on the back end doesn't dry your mouth out like the last beer that we had it's um oh it's really peaty and earthy now i'm getting the twigginess now as well a bit of laser vision Look at that. How that laces. Beautiful. Lovely, lovely stuff. Yeah, reactivated the head a bit. And yeah, it does. The bubbles do um, follow the bottom of the head of the beer. Mmm. Look at it. Look at that. Cracking. Now... There were some um, apologies if you're hearing background noise, by the way, because it's it, the wind's really picked up. Um, I can see trees. Look out onto where the car park is at the back of our flats, and you see trees flowing about and leaves going mad everywhere. It's almost like that um, bit in American Beauty where he films the leaves flying around. Right, I don't know, I don't know where I was going with that. Um, yeah, London Pride, it's cracking. I um, 
I would definitely say it's one to recommend in terms of um, if you've got someone coming to this country for the first time and they wanted to try British beer. I always remember, you know, back in the day, friends and they came, they did the episodes in London and then they made reference to Boddington's. Well, Boddington's has gone down the same road as Tetley's and John Smith's, but now it's in cream flow cans and it's you might find it every now and again on free flow on the on the keg and it's it's been bastardized this i would say is sort of replaced something like a boddington's in terms of a good solid british ale especially you know any tourists are going to go to london aren't they they are they're going to go to london um I'd also obviously recommend Hobgoblin as a beer to try, whether it be, you got three versions of it, whether it be the Ruby, the original, which a lot of people still think is the best, the Gold or the, the IPA. But yeah, London Pride is iconic. Iconic. Not like a recent beer that Williams Brothers put out into Aldi. Uh, right, so, um, one thing I did want to touch on, sorry, I got, I got swept away by the wind got distracted um, is it has been taken over in the past few years by Asahi which is a Japanese lager brand a lot of people are like well, why are they buying this company out um, a lot of people thought well it's Japanese investors is it because of the portfolio and the pubs and they want the properties and they want to do they, are they then going to start selling pubs off and turn them into flats and making money out of the whatever they've got um, but I have to say that I don't think the beer has suffered and that's a good thing don't think the beer suffered I think um, at the end of the day it's been bought out right by another brewery so it's not like a Green King where they've been bought out by investors that are purely after the pub side of things and Green King have so many pubs under their own brand under the Hungry Horse under the Farmhouse Inn you know they have loads and loads and loads of brands and pubs um, whereas Fuller's they have a good solid I think they're a good traditional sort of Cockney sort of you know London brand and you know this is still a cracking beer yeah you're getting that marmalade tartness down the sides of your tongue the bread down the middle and then a bit of pepperiness and spiciness at the back end. And the marmalade flavour sort of continues through at the back end as well. Similar sort of Spitfire-ish, um, but maybe a little bit more bready than Spitfire and a bit, tiny bit stronger because Spitfire is four and a half, this is 4.7. I put them on par with each other though. Um, I do like Spitfire and I do like London Pride. 4.7%, you can't really call it a best bitter, it's too strong for that. They do have another beer out that's called Fuller's ESB, their extra special bitter. I've never tried that. I think you can get that in Sainsbury's. So you know what, I think maybe for my next round of quintessential British beers, I might try the Fuller's ESB and Virgin review it. I think my love for bitters at the minute um, would probably mean I'd really enjoy that uh, whereas before I was like well you know best bitter is an old man drink and I think that's what a lot of the younger people think and that's why bitter doesn't do as well as it should do but all oh, that's changing there are certain breweries that are doing that there's certain breweries that are doing these brown ales as well um, a bit like a Newcastle brown traditional brown ale Sam Smith's brown ale uh, and you know are old school styles coming back? What's what's next? A resurgence of mild? I don't know. It's really nice. That will get... That easily has to get the same as the EPA for me. So it's a thumb and a half. Um, which is a good score. Thumbs up means I'll buy it again. Two thumbs up means like, well, I love it. Where can I get it? Thumb and a half is good, solid, really nice beer. Um... And yeah, that's what London Pride is. Thank you very much for watching. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you again 
for another beer review right here on the Hop House. Ciao for now, people. Stay safe. Ta-ra.